my 30 inch belt sander. I remember when I worked at Dynacraft years ago, we sold a graphite tip abrasion belt that worked uh, just worked fine on those uh, smaller belt sanders. And after selling that belt for years, our supplier at the time increased the thickness of the belt without telling us. All of a sudden, the, these newer belts were so thick, it wouldn't even turn in the machine. They flat out told us they weren't going to change back to the thinner stock, so that was the last we ever carried of them. So I guess the moral of the sp story is, if you decide to go the 1 by 30 inch route, make sure you can buy graphite uh, abrasion belts that are going to run on them unless you're simply going to hand braid your graphite shafts. You may also want to hold off uh, uh, um, until the webinar on ferrule turning to make your final decision on um, which uh, size machine will work with best in your shop. Once again, you may find it helpful if you put a mark on the shaft with a Sharpie pen or wrap a piece of masking tape around the shaft for the portion that you want to abrade it. The rule of thumb, again, is to abrade the full length of the shaft that's going to be inserted in the hosel plus half the length of the ferrule. Okay. Now, believe it or not, there's a very low-tech method to remove the paint and polyurethane from graphite, shaft, uh, graphite shafts, and that's with a knife blade. A few graphite shaft manufacturers have actually recommended using a razor knife to strip off the paint and polyurethane coatings from the tips of their graphite shafts. If performed carefully, it can yield the same um, degree of abrasion as some of the other uh, methods. And in a pinch, I've had to rely on my old trusty pocket knife that happened to be laying around. So you just need to take special care by making sure not to allow the knife blade to cut away any of the composite fibers or, you know, don't gouge it. You just want to scrape gradually across the, uh, the surface. Otherwise, you're going to weaken the shafts. The other thing that uh, you can end up doing is if you're not careful, you could scrape too far up the shaft uh, or shaft tip and create a cosmetic blemish, uh, which will be visible after the club head and the ferrule are installed. And for these last two reasons is the reason, or the reason this method is probably the, the least preferred of hand sanding uh, graphite or composite shafts. Another option is to use the uh, the use of flexible synthetic abrasive wheels, such as Scotch-Brite. Uh, th these are ava available in various forms under uh, commercial names, such as Surebrite, uh, that are attached to an arbor on a motor or fit into, uh, fit into a drill chuck. Once the, the motor's on, you want to start rotating the shaft against the wheel by removing each of the layers of the paint and polyurethane on the graphite shaft. This won't be sufficient enough to uh, work on steel shafts, though. And there's also 2-inch and 3-inch wide uh, mounted flap wheels that can do essentially the same thing. And these could be mounted into an arbor in your drill shock, and they're made of flexible strips of sandpaper, and they come in a variety of different grits. Um, these will work perfectly fine on graphite shafts as long as you use light to medium pressure and you don't, need, you don't use a, uh, a grit any coarser than like uh, 120 grit. Now these flat sanders are available in 80 and, and sometimes even uh, uh, coarser than that, um, but they're really not designed to abrade the shaft of a steel shaft. They're more designed for deburring, finishing, and polishing metals. So I probably wouldn't recommend to, to use these for uh, abrading steel shafts at all. Now I want to show you what the tips of the shafts uh, should look like. So let's start out by showing what they shouldn't look like. In this first picture, we have a, a, a graphite and a steel shaft that haven't been braided, uh, uh, braided enough. 
Now, if we look at the, uh, the graphite shaft first, it's easier to tell the difference as the paint is virtually intact. Uh, only a light scraping of the polyurethane occurred. Now, if you take a look at the steel shaft, it's only lightly sanding or lightly sanded, and this is causing a soft brush satin look, and not coarse uh, like we talked about before. You can't see the uh, the scratches from the the uh, the grit, the, the sandpaper. In both of these cases, cases um, there's just not a sufficient surface for the epoxy to adhere to. And there's a high probability that the epoxy bond may fail. This next picture is going to show uh, the proper amount of abrasion that you should strive for. These can be achieved by either the manual or the motorized methods um, that I spoke about earlier. Now the steel shaft is devoid of any shiny chrome finish and it has a nice uniform rough or coarse texture around the entire circumference of the shaft. The abrasion takes place longer than what the insertion of the hosel will be, yet not too long that the ferrule is not going to cover it up. In the case of the graphite shaft, it too is uniform in roughness around the entire shaft and down to the bare charcoal color. If there was just a little paint on the, the uh, shaft showing, that would be fine too. Uh, but you just don't want a whole bunch of paint like the previous slide. And the key is to remove the uh, smooth polyurethane and paint finish for a better adhesion and a bond that will last hopefully uh, in, indefinitely. 